This indeed was a very, very good chapter. And uh, it, it showed out a lot, you know, it, a big open up in a way. You know, you see everything come together from a side story of Nina Farian and of course the great Bondi Gandhi, the demon lord. And even with the two beasts, two beast kin, um, Reina and, and Persona. And Persona, <laughs> I mean Persona. I, sorry. You see that everything comes together, and then this one event is happening, you know, in Mashako Tensai. And it's nice seeing it happen, you know, because we're technically on volume 9 of the light novels. We're in the middle right now. We're literally smack dab in the middle of it, as I recall. And yes, I have not forgotten. I just keep delaying it. I am going to get the light novels, and I'm going to talk about them when I get my hands on them. I pretty much read them, I just have to reread them again to see if any differences. Well, anyways, it starts off um, with something that most isekai just don't do. You can tell when someone puts their heart into writing an isekai story, or even a light novel for that matter, is when they don't have a nice established plan. When you see most isekai, the generic trope, as generic as you can get, you see the guy go to the other world, gets overpowered, has a lot of girls liking him, goes to a guild or a school, and he defeats the demon lord, and that's it. There's no established world, there's no religion, no culture, no economy, you know, no good lore, none of that stuff. So when you have some of these guys that do that, like, it sends a bookworm, re-zero, and stuff, with some good backstory, you can tell when someone puts a whole heart into the establishment of the world. So even with Mushoku Tensai, you see how they even had a great establishment with the Beastmen. The Beast can keep forgetting which one it is every time. Where it talks about their god and how he re he united them into the great forest. And then how um how Rena and um Persena are both, you know, descendants. Is it Rena and Persena? I can't keep forgetting her name because they changed her name. I keep calling her Rena because when I first read the web novels, they were calling her Rena. But then they call her Persona. They call her I need to go back and actually look so I can stop being this terrible mistake all the time. Um it is. It's Lena. It's Lena. The cat girl's name is Lena. Now keep forgetting that because I'm so used to calling her Rena. You know, that's how it was originally in the web novels. Well, the fan translations, and I do think the fan translations are better. So now I've got to say Rena. So anyways, those two were descendants from that god that pretty much helped them out with their world. That being said, they have this culture of mating season. Um, they challenge a mate. Whoever wins the battle gets to be the head of the household. And of course, since those two could be the leaders of the tribe one day, a bunch of the guys are over there and they're challenging them. But since Rudius beat them, they made Rudius their boss. So in order to get to them, they have to beat Rudius, and none of them can beat Rudius. And the way the Rudius beats them, just showing an example of it, it wasn't by him just blasting them off. Rudius does, he does trickery. He uses his brain when he defeats his opponents. He just upright just blasts them or just one punches them. Like you see in most Isekai, he has to do his strategy because he knows he can't outbeat them with strength, which is good. He uses his quagmire. You know, that's what we call him the quagmire. He creates a slippery, like a sinking ground for the for his opponent, and then when the opponent is distracted and immobile, he shoots them with stone cannon, his signature move. So, Mushoku Tensai was a video game. Breeze's main tactics would be stone cannon and, of course, quagmire, you know, along with some, some water attack and so. His main his main attack, his finisher, will probably be a transformation when he's inside his magical armor. That will be probably his finisher, where he transforms instead of doing a final attack. That'd be pretty cool, but I'm getting off topic here. Not only that, we've got to see Bonnie Gandhi and Rena Farian, where she's there trying to get Rudius, but she realizes that not all the mages are there anymore. There are also um, beast people there now, and because of that, 
she's having this different perspective, like, oh, snap. So she's thinking really this is very strong dude, which he is, but not in the way she thinks he is. Rudy is strong in his own way when it comes to his brains, as you can clearly see. And there's something that they did pick up really well on in this series, is where most mages are physically weak, except for fairy tale. In this world, most mages just study and they use magic, and that's it. They don't have much training and physical techniques, but thanks to Rudy's father, Paul, he was able to learn those techniques, you know, now he's strong, not too strong, but he's strong enough to beat any mage, because he has that endurance, because not only does he have the mana, but now he has the endurance to be really good, a very powerful combat mage. But however, when he goes against someone that's like a sword saints, he probably isn't going to win on a head-to-head -head battle. It depends who that sword saint is. If it's a high-class one where they become a sword king, it's probably over for him. That's all I'm saying. So I'm glad they have the power display here. Well, anyways, he's hiding and he's talking to Fitz, who gets a little jealous because you know who Fitz is. And then Bonnie Guy runs into him, challenging him for a duel. Now, question people are asking, why is Bonnie Gotti there? What made him want to go and challenge Rudius? See for himself of what's happening. You will see down the line. Yo, it's just, I. this is why I love this series so much, of how the little things from different times in the past of the show comes back into a full effect later on down the line. You know, actions and consequences, you know, sometimes the actions are the actions and sometimes the consequences could be good or bad, determined on the situation in the person. So that's the reason why I love this series so much. It's just good... And they're just teasing me with the anime, man. I know they say 2021, but they ain't saying what season. They ain't saying a season. <laughs> well, anyways, um, I think it's very interesting now, seeing how Rius is going to have a challenge the Lord Bonnie Gandhi, because he just completely wiped out. And don't expect Nina to really have a big role here and stuff. People are thinking that like, she's going to run and, and meet Rius, but... Probably not. I think the entire point of her side story here is to make her have a different perspective on Rudius. It's the main point. And she sees Ares and how she's always gloating about Rudius. So she thinks he can't be all that. So when she sees him, she's probably going to have this different opinion on him and go back to Ares saying, Well, yeah, you got your work cut out for you. And there we go. So I like this. It's very good. Anyways, I was like, uh, now that I got done enjoying myself with a nice chapter of the month of my show, Tensai, next video, it's some obviously bad news. So anyways, I hope you guys enjoyed this video. And if you like more of my Shoko Tensai content, like, comment, subscribe, and of course, hit that bell icon to get more of moi. This has been Macron on Manime, signing out.